would I get a CBO for $42,000 when I could just get an Indian Challenger for $28,000? <laughs> This bike was made to compete with the Road Glide. It's gonna have the RDRS, it's gonna have that smart lean angle. Going into the corner once again, super easy just to lean this bike over. A lot of it, a lot of that has to do with the VVT on here. That's something that uh, India needs to address on their bikes. anyone has done this comparison yet. We have these two beautiful 2023 models right behind me. The Indian Challenger, the Harley Davidson Road Live CBO. We're gonna put them head to head today. We're gonna see which one is the better bike. You guys asked for it. I really didn't want to do this, but you guys asked for it. Now in all honesty, the reason why I did not want to do this video from the get was just because of the price range difference and because of the type of models they are this is the elite uh, which would kind of be more so like a road glide special the cbo is kind of in its own category um price range is way up there compared to this just because of different components so it wouldn't be much fair to just compare this to a roguelike special like my 2021 special which we are going to do that video is going to be up soon as well now what we're going to do in this video is that we are going to put them side by side compare it looks wise tech just everything and then what we're going to do is that we're going to take both bikes out i'm going to give you my perspective from a rider's view on both bikes now we're going to go ahead and start with looks i mean looks are very subjective right i'm a huge fan of what the indian challenger is um i think it's a really good looking bike when this bike first released it, people a lot of people really hated on it for several reasons now right before we hop in this video i just want to tell you yes i am a harley davidson rider i own a 2021 roguelike special with that being said i really like what indian is doing as a company as a whole um, I like what they're developing. I'm a fan of the brand. So no, I'm not going to be just on the Harley end or just on the Indian side. It's just, this is not about that. That's not my bike. This is not my bike. This is a loaner and my friend loaned me that for a week. So both are not my bikes. So like always, what I'm going to do is give you my honest opinion, whether you like it or you don't like it it's up to you guess we could just start the video by talking about looks right looks are very subjective so i may like something you may not like it the other person might or love it or whatever it is um when it comes to the looks apartment this bike came out uh when it, when it was first released and uh a lot of people did not like the design of the indian challenger it was said that it was a wannabe roguelite um, and with all honesty, the reason why this Challenger got built is because of the Rogue Glide. Indian just didn't make up this bike out of nowhere, out of thin air, and said, hey, we're going to make this brand new bike just because. No, this bike was made to compete with the Rogue Glide. Obviously, it, they're going to have some similarities here and there, um, but it, it got a lot of hate. Design-wise, I think it's cool. I think it's awesome. It's different. I think it's its own thing as well. Uh, it's a similar to the roguelite yes but it's its, it's, its own thing total different bike um the cbo the brand new redesigned roguelite is um it's gorgeous <laughs> it's gorgeous uh when the photos first leaked out on online uh those photos were really bad really bad angles the bike looked uh, even i was like oh what the hell did it just do to the roguelite like no um after seeing more videos and more footage and then obviously now Riding a seat in person, it's it's beautiful. It's drop dead gorgeous. I really love what Harley Davidson has done with this bike right here. So um, for the looks department, I'm sorry, but this is gonna take it by a mile. This bike looks a lot, a lot better than what that Challenger does. I'm sorry. The sleek designs, the way the bike just flows from the front to the back you see the lines just flowing in and out of every little part on the bike the indian is a little bit different it's a 
you have some roundish, you have some squared off, there's lines going up and down everywhere. It just doesn't flow as easily. Like I said, I like the way it looks. I think it looks awesome. It's its own thing, but this bike right here. Now let's start going over some components. Let's start with the front of the bike. Both bikes are going to have an inverted front end. Uh, both bikes are going to have big Brembo radius calipers right here. Both have great stopping power. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we're on the road. Both bikes are going to have LED lights in the front. Really, really cool. I really like what both companies have done with the light designs on these bikes as well. Now moving our way back, both bikes are going to have six gallon gas tanks. This bike right here just got a huge upgrade with the Milwaukee 121. It's smooth, a lot of power. It's punching 139 foot-pounds of torque, which beats this bike. This bike was beating the Road Glide before, but this bike right here has the liquid-cooled Power Plus 108 and it's punching out 128 foot-pounds of torque. So a lot more on the CVO. This engine here is now water-cooled just for the heads. This is a liquid-cooled engine. This is just water-cooled for top heads, uh, something new that Harley-Davidson is doing now. And we obviously see Harley-Davidson starting to do a few things on this bike that this bike already had just differently. We're not going to get into the whole argument of this bike is a wannabe challenger because it's not it's its own thing that's just, we might get into it later now power wise the numbers don't lie so the cbo is gonna take that right there when it comes to the infotainment system um i really like what uh the indian challenger has with the two gauges on top and that seven inch screen um real easy to use real user friendly um but, but it, it cannot compare to this 12.3 inch screen that Harley Davidson has just put on this bike. It's the biggest screen on any motorcycle out there on the road right now. It, the screen is possibly, it, it is bigger than most screens that are in your vehicles out there on the road as well. Um, real bright, real easy to use. All the technology is all just jam packed in there. Um, I, I really love what they did with that. So. Um, technology wise as well this is gonna have the RDRS this is gonna have that smart lean angle which almost it comes out to be in almost the same thing the safety enhancements um, they both have a lot of, of a lot of uh, safety enhancements so both bikes on that are the same but this this dash here is gonna take it for me it just it's clean it's modern it's futuristic it's beautiful um, let's talk about the design of the inner fairing um, I'm sorry, I got I, I got to give it to the to the CBO again. I really like the way they just curved out all these lines and just laid everything out on the fairing. Um, I love my Rogue Glide special fairing, but this is a, a nice updated look to it. Um, it's really really clean. Let's talk about bars. Now that we're that we're in front of uh, the dash and we're talking about the inner fairing, this is amazing. What Harley Davidson has done right here. The new bar setup is going to give you. Um, about 20, I don't know if it's 23 or 28 degree angle in order for you to switch the bars up or back towards you, but that's amazing. They look great. So if you don't want to change the bars, you can just leave the bars as they are. Um, gives you a nice look of the screen as well. doesn't get in the way. Um, and just the, the, the fact that you get to move it, um, it's, it's, it's just a plus to me. Um, for someone who, who really doesn't want to waste money on bars, like these look good and you could just leave them as is. Um, bars on the Challenger. I just don't like the way they come out. More so like the beach bars on the Road Glide. I hate those bars. Um, these are a bit more comfortable. These are a lot more comfortable actually than the bars on the, on a regular Road Glide. So if it was against a regular Road Glide, this will take it. But the bar setup is going to take it on here as well. Let's talk about seats real quick. Let's talk about seats because I, me personally, I am not a fan of Harley Davidson seats they're 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 horrible they're stiff they're they're just not not good and this CVLC right here is designed really nice it looks good it's a comfortable yeah it's all right for a few miles but it's you know after 100 100 miles 150 miles you really start to to feel it I, I took it for the test um, this stock seat right here in the Indian Challenger amazing it's is it the best looking seat no it's okay 
but it's really comfortable. You could really be on this bike all day riding and you won't feel a thing. It, it keeps you in place. It's comfortable. So when it comes to comfort on the seat, Indian Challenger for me is going to take it. Now, both of these bikes are pretty heavy. They're baggers. They're really heavy. And I thought that Harley Davidson was going to make this bike even lighter. They did make it lighter. It's 35 pounds lighter than its predecessor, but it's still heavier than the Challenger. So the Challenger is coming in at 840 pounds. This bike weighs 862 pounds. I don't know what it is that about this bike. It just feels way lighter though. Um, even moving around the garage, it feels lighter. Um, on the road, it feels lighter. And it's not because it's 20 pounds or 30, 40 pounds lighter than this. But the way the weight distribution is on this bike, um, it, you, you could definitely feel it. It feels a lot lighter when you're out there running, especially in those corners. But even just the simple fact of moving the bike around the garage, it just, it, it feels lighter. This bike is also gonna have a 31 degree lean angle. The CBO is gonna have a 32. I'll point out something that I really like about this bike that this bike doesn't have, which is the adjustable windshield. And some of you might say, well, that, that, that's just a gimmick. It's real gimmicky. It's, listen, that little thing works, man. You're, you're, you're on the road um, and you want to adjust your shield all the way up. It takes all that wind off for you. On this, you, you don't have the option. Um, but yes, you are able to switch out the shields. Even this one, you're able to, I know Clockworks makes even a taller one for it as well. Um, but obviously for Harley Davidson, we have tons and tons of shields out there that, that we can order. This is a brand new, uh, design. So shields for this are not out yet, but on my current road glide, there's a lot of companies out there that do shields for it. Talking about that, the aftermarket, obviously aftermarket is going to be huge with Harley Davidson. So when you're out there and you're trying to decide, well, which bike do I really want to get? Do I want to get this bike? Do I want to get that bike? Think about the aftermarket as well. Um, Harley Davidson has that. They have so many companies building so many parts for their bikes. Um, and in the end, in the, in the last, I'm gonna say the last maybe two or three years, a lot of companies have been stepping it up and they, they're making a lot of cool stuff with these bikes, but it doesn't compare nowhere near to the amount of parts and accessories that you can get for a Harley Davidson. Even from the Harley Davidson catalog itself, they have so much stuff. I mean, I, I, w I was online looking for parts and stuff just to, you know, just to see what Indian had on their website. And it's just, it's not that much stuff. I have a few things here and there. Aftermarket really needs to get after this because, I mean, a lot of people love the Challenger and, and a lot of people are buying Challengers, man. They're buying a lot of Indian products. So, um, get a, do, those of you companies out there, get on it. Get on it now, man, because a lot of people out there thirsty to make these bikes into their own, add their own flavor, their own taste to it. Um, real quick, when it comes to the bags, I, I don't know who has the bigger bag. I didn't look at the numbers and the cubic inch of space. Um, but to me, it just feels like the Indian Challenger bags are a bit bigger. I, I feel like they, you could fit a lot more stuff in there. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, or if you guys have the information, uh, drop it down below. I don't, I don't know the, 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 the cubic space on both of them. That pretty much covers everything here. I think we're gonna hit the road right now and, and finish talking about the suspension, finish talking about how both bikes feel. So right off the bat, a lot of power on here. A lot of power. Don't let the 108 shot away from the 121. I know you hear 121 on the CBO. And it's like, whoa, it's a 121 over a 108. Doesn't matter. The way this engine is put together, the amount of power that is putting out, it's insane. It's great what Indiana has done here. Stopping power feels really good. Brakes feel amazing. Lean angle. I mean, this bike, going into the corners, um, I, I've been riding this bike a lot and just going into the corners, man, it's just, it feels great. It feels so agile, really, really light. Um, talking about suspension, it absorbs everything on the road. This bike is going to have a Fox Monoshock suspension and it feels great. Just absorbs everything. Leading into the corners, it just feels so light. Now, one thing I gotta mention is that I wish everything on here just looked and felt nicer, cause this is like roll, look, this is like 
Velcro right there. It's just a lot of, it just doesn't feel premium. These chrome parts right here, this is plastic. I wish that they were, you know, aluminum. I just, I don't know, when it comes to little stuff like that, I just want premium stuff, especially when you're paying big money. I mean, $28,000 for a bike is a lot of money. It's a, it's a brand new car right there. But just little stuff, man. I really like that they put their uh, trickle charger right here. That's pretty cool. Controls right here are really easy to use. The CVO has so much buttons and controls everywhere. It's like, it's just too much stuff. A lot, a lot of buttons. This is more minimal. This is like the roll glide, the regular roll glide. So very, very easy to use. Going into the corner once again, super easy just to lean this bike over. Coming out of the ramp. A lot of power. So if you really want to get up there, you get up there quick, nice and easy. Um, one thing I do got to point out, guys, this being a liquid cooled engine it gets really hot i don't understand because it's it's supposed to run cooler and it doesn't it runs really hot a lot of bumps right here just soaks everything up yeah man indian did a great job when it came to the suspension on this bike really good now Brakes feel amazing, suspension feels great, riding the bike feels great, a lot of power and torque everywhere you need it. It's, it's a fun bike to ride. That's one thing I always tell everybody when they're, they're talking smack about the Challenger. <laughs> I'm like, listen, have you been on it? No. Well, get on the bike, let me know what you think after that. It's, it's a really fun bike to ride, it really is. And for it being a bagger, like I was saying before, it just feels super light. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what it is, but it feels great. Now, which one is better to ride? Which one is funner to ride? That's also subjective, but we're going to get on the CVO right now and we're going to let you know. <laughs> All right, so power delivery in this bike it's a lot smoother a lot smoother so like the other bikes you you feel that big rumble you feel that power building up like crazy on this bike it's just it's like a silent killer man so smooth you hardly feel anything one thing i forgot to mention was that both these bikes are gonna have three riding modes uh road mode rain mode and then sport mode which we are in right now you feel the power right away as well you felt it right away on the on the challenger um you do on this bike but it's just this bike just does it more i don't know i don't even know how to say it just it's smoother just it dances around classier <laughs> One thing I will tell you is that this bike does feel a lot more premium. Like every touch on here, every feel around here just, it feels premium. That's something that uh, India needs to address on their bikes. It just, you know, you're paying a lot of money for these bikes. They look good, but they, they have the, the premium touch missing, that factor. Okay, corner, corner, corner. Feels great. I don't know, I feel like, I think the Indian feels better in the corners. It's just something about that bike where it feels lighter and you kinda, you feel like you kinda throw it over a bit more. But this feels so nimble. So nimble. Both bikes feel really, really nimble. Both bikes have really good stopping power, really good brakes. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think the 
the Indian just makes you feel a bit more comfortable in those turns. I think a lot of that has to also do with the suspension as well. Both bikes have really good suspension, but this suspension got upgraded from the old Road Glide and um, I don't know, I think uh, I uh, the Challenger might still have better suspension. Bumps, taking bumps, it absorbs everything really good. I think the Challenger might absorb it a little bit better. Yeah, I don't know. I, th I think the Challenger might have, the suspension might be better. One thing that I will add on is that this throttle response is a lot more crisp than the Challenger. The Challenger has a bit of a lag to it on the throttle, um, but the Harley-Davidson is just more snappier. You feel it right away. You feel it as soon as you just grab it. Yeah, the Indian Challenger has a little bit of a lag to it, man. And at times I catch myself like when I get on it and it's just not all there. I don't know, ride quality. The ride quality in here feels premium, man. It feels really good. Suspension-wise, Indian got it. When it comes to quality and feel on the bike, Harley has it. Brakes feel about the same. Power, Harley has it. <laughs> This 121 is, is something else. And it's, it, the thing is that it does it so smooth. Like I was saying before, it's like a silent killer. It's so smooth, the transmission is so smooth. Switching into gears, just the way the, the engine builds up. A lot of it, a lot of that has to do with the VVT on here as well. And I'll tell you one thing, this bike runs really cool. The fact that Indian has a liquid-cooled engine that runs super hot and this only has water cool heads and this is really, really cool, I don't know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. This is how that Indian should feel when it comes to the heat coming off that motor. So I feel absolutely nothing right now. And before when I was an Indian, I was cooking up already by the time I got here. Well, that's going to be the side-by-side -side comparison of the 2023 Indian Challenger Elite and the 2023 Harley-Davidson Rogue Glide CVO. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. I hope you took some knowledge from it as well. If you guys are in the market and you're looking for a bagger and maybe you're looking between this bike and that bike or maybe this bike and just the Rogue Glide, I'm going to be having a, a compared video between this and my Rogue Glide. That's going to be more... More, more, more closer to what these two can be. This is a $28,000 bike. This is a $42,000 bike. Now, that, that's the reason why I kind of didn't want to do it from the beginning. It's just a huge difference. Everything that you're going to see on a CVO, you don't see on a regular road lap. So, that, for those of you guys out there who are saying, well, why would I get a CVO for $42,000 when I could just get an Indian Challenger for $28,000? A lot of stuff on the CVO, guys, doesn't trickle down to a regular road lap. Just compare this to the Rogue Glide Special, take it from there. And even at that, the Rogue Glide Special is still cheaper than this bike right here. Is it gonna have everything that this bike has? No, um, that, like I said, that's more of a fair comparison right there, where this bike might beat that bike out in a lot of stuff. But anyways, if you wanna see more content like this, you're definitely in the right place. Go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell button, that's gonna notify you anytime I upload any type of new content. And like always, let the force be with you, ride safe, and enjoy the ride, baby. Peace.